uh, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining IFC webinars. Uh, great to have you. I can see you are actively introducing yourself. So hello, hello to everyone. So what are we going to discuss today? How to collect, how to manage, how to store dirty linen. Sounds exciting to me. Very exciting. Uh, lots of challenges we see on uh, on this journey. How? What are the regulations? What are the best practices? How to improve your uh, laundry area to make sure it is compliant and it's safe for both staff and the patients and also that your linen uh, collection process and linen storage process is safe for both staff working with it and for your patients because linen is used by, by your patients actively. So let's discuss today. And our first speaker is Dr. Robert Achuba from Lili Hospitals, Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Achuba, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Julia. Can I share my screen now? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm Dr. Chudi, talking from Lily Hospital in Nigeria, actually a private hospital. I'm here to share our experience, especially coming from a, a low resource setting. I'm actually here to see if I can give help and hope to those that maybe they don't have a hospital that is large enough they are in a resource poor setting, but they still are interested in making sure that handling linen is done in a safe way. I'll be using the next 15 minutes to try and talk to, to us about our own experience in our hospital here in Benin, Nigeria, using this outline. So this outline is what will guide my talk here. I'm not going to do much talking really. I'm going to be investing more in photographs to actually show and buttress the points I'm trying to bring about, you know? Like as it is, what this webinar is about, people don't really realize, healthcare workers don't realize how important it is to handle your laundry in a way that is safe and gives the right support to the patients that you're managing. Also, it is something that should protect those that are handling this linen. So it's both ways, those handling the linen and those that the linen is intended for. Right. Yes, those handling the linen that it's intended for. So like I wrote here, oh, although soil linen may be contaminated with microbes, the risk of disease transmission is negligible if it is handled, transported, and laundered in a manner that avoids dispersal. So this webinar has made everybody understand that it's important to give uh, laundry handling, the importance it deserves. Even if you are in a resource poor setting, you can still do something. Once you understand the principles about inf infection and pre prevention of infection, and also the principles surrounding handling and linen, you can talk about taking care of the unidirectional flow in your hospital so that there is no recontamination while you are taking care of your linen. So this is what I have here. So I'm sure that there's someone else on the panel that is going to do more with respect to all these definitions and all that, but definitely it has to appear on my slide so that we are all on the same page. But here I'm going to be presenting our own picture in Lily Hospital, Benin. So yes, this was the trigger. This is why I we decided that we wanted to get on the program and improve our linen handling. And at this point, I'd like to really say thank you very much to Dr. Joe Williamson, Dr. Juliet, and Dr. Ajibi Oyomi, who actually came in to help audit our practice and see what we're doing and expose to us our shortcomings and helped us to move further. So we have this desire for international best practice so that we could have safety for our patients. In fact, when we were introduced to the concept of International Patient Safety Goals. It was a major eye opener for us. And we said we need to take it that much higher. Where I practice is not really like a purpose-built hospital, but we're able to put one or two buildings together and 
have a practice, but that doesn't mean that you won't pay attention to the details that are needed to ensure that there's safety for both patients and uh, staff. So th that's why we have infection prevention and control. We wanted to make sure that we are top notch. And that's how the International Financial Corporation sends people to come and audit our practice and see how we can align with the world. Therefore, we needed to slow down and see how to go about having a project. It's, it's going to be, it was like a journey. Having a project that will be sustainable, the principles from the beginning needed to be set out clearly so that finally we could have things that would be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound as things generally that are smart. So preparing for action, we understood that we would need a lot of finance. Apart from the finance, we would need technical know-how, people that knew where we wanted to go. We knew where we were, we knew where we wanted to go, but we did not know how we were going to get there. So that's why we called independent people to come and do a baseline assessment for us. This was way back 2019. Following that assessment, we on our own had to develop and execute an action plan following the guidance and reports that we were given from them. And we continued like that for about almost one and a half years, you know, when we felt that, okay, fine, it's possible that we have made some leaps. We now asked for a second assessment. And that's when they came to assess the impact of what they um, had audited two years previously. And it seemed like we had made some, some improvement in our delivery. Australia to God's union handling. And then went on to see how we can have a program that we can sustain over the long term. When we're involved in a lot of trainings of staff, training of staff, development of SOPs, guidelines, checklists, we needed to make sure that our infection prevention and control committee met regularly and had word rounds from time to time, going everywhere, involving everybody to ensure that we kept up the pace as to what we wanted. So, so this presentation really is just our journey so far. These were the constraints that we had in this particular facility. Like I said at the beginning, it's a facility that wasn't a purpose-built hospital, so to speak, but one or two buildings put together, then we now had to try and then create room to do things in the proper way. We didn't have a unidirectional flow for uh, theater, uh, linen, handling, and all that. But from the auditing that we got, yes, we were able to find a way, and it has been sustainable, actually. Also, to make that change, I mean, things that in involve structural problems in a hospital, definitely we need a lot of finance. So it cost us a lot to invest in getting a caravan, bringing up materials, constructions, investing in uh, personal protective equipment all over. But since we knew what we wanted to do, where we wanted to get to, we made sure that we continue with that. So this is just generally speaking. We all know that for you to at least take the leaning away from the patient's environment, there are ways to do it so that we don't further worsen things for other people, other, other patients, or the staff that are handling the linen, changing the bedding carefully, bagging the linen at the bedside, and what have you. I think this is what nearly everybody knows. So I'll go straight to the lily picture. This is what happens in our facility. So our linen management staff are required to wear aprons, gloves, and gowns. They are definitely required to be vaccinated against hepatitis B because that way you can't be handling a, a linen if you have that. And the risk of even contracting hepatitis B is there, handling linen. They are educated on the risk of injury from contaminated shops, instruments, and broken glass. Facility was expanded to enable a unidirectional movement of linen from dirty to clean. The used linen from wards and the theater were segregated into red and yellow trolleys for onward movement to the laundry complex. So I think from now I'm going to be investing more in pictures, going to be more of a pictorial thing now. 
So we had to we had to improvise and make sure we have something. This is present in every ward and a theater. So the way it goes, very soiled linen, visibly soiled linen go into the yellow bag and the others, are, they go into the yellow bag. So this is to make sure that you segregate the linen and make sure that uh, they don't mix up. So like I was trying to explain, visibly soiled linen are soaked in freshly produced sodium hypochlorite solution for about 30 minutes. They're transported to the washing machine ensuring unidirectional flow. Drying is done with a dryer. Still maintaining unidirectional flow. Dried linen are taken for ironing and subsequent labeling. So this is a picture of uh, our laundry complex. It's more like a caravan. I'm sure you have noticed that. And that's the door in front of you there. That's the wash hand basin there. We need directions for how to wash your hands. Just to the left there, is where we have our sluice room, but I'll take you there. I'll try and just take you on a tour so that you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the opening into where we keep our sluice. This is where the sluicing is done. And we enter into the sluice room. That's where everything starts. We are rolling in the red and yellow trolley. You go to the sluice room. This is what our sluice room looks like. And the sluicing is done from here. And the, after about 30 minutes, soil linen are transported to the laundry complex proper, proper. So this is the door. I've opened the door now. I'm just trying to make us understand that the unidirectional movement is the most important thing so that there is no recontamination. So you finish with sluicing. You're now here at the level of the washing machine. You have the washing machine and the dryer here. This is the washing machine and the dryer. Uh, so I just had to give you another view, just while still maintaining our unidirectional flow. We had to make sure that staff were trained on this so that there won't be any recontamination or what have you. This is still the, the, where we have the washing machine and the dryer, but this is the door taking you to the ironing room. So even in the laundry, of course, we needed to comp compartmentalize it. A resource poor setting, but what do we do? We need to make sure that we deliver the safest to our clients. This is the door leading to the ironing room. That's the ironing table over there. But just still follow me, please. This is the ironing board and our irons. This is where the ironing takes place. We fold our linen after that. This is the door out of the ironing room to the storage area. Where we're done, when we're done ironing, this is where we store uh, the linen and so on. And it's from there that we take the linen to the wards where they are needed. So just picturally, like I, I put storage is done above floor level in the clean cupboard. When the linen is ready for dispatch, the linen management staff put calls through to recipient departments to expect linen. The transport is done using a green trolley. It has to be color coded. The trolleys are cleaned regardless of use at least once a day with 0.05% sodium hypochlorite solution. Of course, there's an emphasis on hand washing all the time. So this is where we store our linen. Def definitely has to be off the floor. And the linen at the top most are the ones that have been condemned. They've been found to be torn and uh, old, tattered and not fit for use anymore. So we put them up there. But this is where we store our clean linen. And then this is the door that used to exit. So there is no way you go back to the door that you entered from to bring in the dirty linen. This is the door that uh, you exit, used to exit the laundry complex. This is the green trolley that I talked about. Everything is, you know, improvised so that it can work with our environment. If you remember something I talked about at the beginning about the linen, linen has to be geared towards the people in that environment, but you still have to deliver the best of service to them. So these were the challenges that we had when it came to trying to implement, implement a new culture of uh, taking care of linen, infection prevention and control. Everybody knows that um, culture eats innovation for breakfast. 
So it was a culture shift. We had to make people wake up and change things from the way they used to, what they knew to be the right thing, but we had to come in and say, no, we need to do this now. This is how the world is going on with it. And it, it requires continuous training, continuous development of SOPs, protocols, pushing uh, checklists, making sure that they are done, people are doing what they should be doing. However, this part of the world is a large exit of uh, healthcare personnel. So sometimes there's that turnover of staff. After you finish training staff, they need to leave, you need to train other staff as they come in. So we've made it an important part of the onboarding process here that uh, you need to be versed in infection prevention and control. Also, the focus is on making sure that the system is strengthening, regardless of the number of people that leave, the people that come in will be indoctrinate, indoctrinated by the system. Of course, it took a lot of finance for us to do what we did, but of course, we had the full support of the chief, chief executive officer here and the executive directors and our in-house facilitator, the chief quality assurance officer. They gave us a lot of support, plus finance. So these were the lessons that we actually got, just to mention a few, because I know my time is almost up. It's something that you need to understand. If you're running a hospital in a low resource setting such as ours, even if you do not get it right at the beginning, at any point you decide to, it is possible. So you make that move. That first step towards where you need to get to is usually the longest step. But once you take it, definitely you get to where you need to be. Like I tried to bring out here, despite the amount of money spent, we're encouraged knowing that this was a major culture shift in the right direction. So no matter the kind of resource you invest, as long as I feel safe that tomorrow, if I'm ill, I'm coming to a place that I even helped to develop safety and all that, yes, there's no amount of money that can buy that. As long as there's safety in the place, then it's what I will be comfortable with. And lastly, you never know the caliber of staff you have until you embark on projects such as this. There are some champions waiting to be discovered. You know, when we went started on this journey, people that were in relative obscurity before now just took a beautiful interest in the project and became champions and were even driving some of us that were supposed to be leaders. So it was something that was worthwhile to watch. And I'll encourage that anybody that needs to handle laundry in the correct way, even though the person is in a resource poor setting, should go ahead. It's worthwhile. Thank you very much for listening. Dr. Chuba, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful story because I think such stories are very inspiring for our audience. And let me just uh, briefly describe you, uh, I mean, to the audience, uh, our, the key highlights from Dr. Achuba's presentation. So first of all, great quote, let's give laundry attention and importance it deserves. Because what we generally see is a common practice. Laundry is treated as a supplementary process and its importance is underestimated. However, it is important part of uh, infection prevention work because it's potential risk of infection for both staff and patients. That's why it really deserves attention. It really deserves management properly, being managed properly. And uh, Dr. Achuba mentioned all the wonderful things they did to their uh, laundry area and laundry processes. Of course, we shouldn't forget about policies and procedures and guidelines. And later today, we will talk about the regulations and what the rules are of management, of managing safely uh, the linen practices. Uh, of course, it should be stored uh, separately from the dirty linen and in a clean place, not on the floor. And a wonderful example of clearly marking which linen is for which area, etc., because it also keeps everything in order. Thanks a lot, Dr. Achuba, for your examples of the um, uh, trolleys for linen, because again, lots of questions we receive when we start talking to hospitals about their laundry management practices. Always the question is, what is the best example of uh, laundry management trolley? Should there be trolleys? Is it safe just to carry linen, transport linen inside the facility in the bags? Of course, such trolleys, uh, different color that Dr. Achuba provided are the best examples and they ensure safety for both staff and patients. 
And also staff training. Staff training is critically important because, again, many hospitals forget uh, that staff working uh, with lean and sometimes do not have uh, education of nurses because they are usually nurse assistants in many hospitals. And they require additional knowledge about uh, sharps and needles injuries, about management of contaminated linen, and of course, they use personal protective equipment. So these are the things that always should be kept in mind. And uh, even if uh, there are certain uh, limitations regarding the space or uh, there is no unidirectional flow, still all of it can be solved and it's definitely worth doing it. And now we move to our next speaker. And uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, Gaurav Loria, Vice President from Apollo Hospitals. Gaurav, uh, you're welcome to start your presentation. Hello and namaste everybody. Uh, I'm Gaurav and first of all, uh, a big thanks to the IFC team for having me today for this session. Uh, thank you to each one of you who have logged in today through multiple connections and uh, to different, uh, sorry, from different countries uh, and also who may be listening to this webinar uh, in the future. Uh, I will try that I have not repeat some of the points or, you know, get into a little bit other details which Dr. Achuba has already touched them so beautifully in his presentation, uh, you know, so that uh, we move on to the important topics. Uh, sorry. Uh, so first of all, the question of, you know, uh, all of us wash our linen at home at some point of, you know, uh, the week or the days and we do that. So, and, and there is no rocket science behind it. So why so much of uh, discussion about, you know, uh, especially linen, which is uh, needs to be, which is used in healthcare or hospitals. Now we need to understand that, that hospitals per se, even if it's a smaller or a larger uh, organization or an entity, it produces a lot of linen that, needs to be cleaned on a daily basis. Textiles in hospitals, which are basically considered to be formites, they are capable of carrying multiple infections, multiple organisms. And these organisms can survive on this unclean laundry for almost 90 days, if not cleaned earlier. Uh, patients bedding, clothes, especially the privacy curtains that we use where, you know, a lot of uh, splashes may happen while doing procedures they carry pathogens as well. And, uh, you know, as per the little research and studies that we went through, it was reported that three to 4% of the hospital acquired infections happen because of mishandling of the uh, infected linen. Now, you know, what should be ideal, an ideal mechanism or a way of handling laundry? You know, if you look at it at a governance level or a leadership level, which is the best way to handle these linen? Now, we do have multiple models and I'll quickly go through these models. One is on the rental. Uh, one is kind of a, a rental model uh, that are available, which are basically for the smaller size hospitals uh, where, you know, they can't have their own laundry in-house. So they hire a, a linen contractor that gives the linen that provides the laundry services. Everything has its own advantages and disadvantages, but a lot of disadvantages here uh, of, you know, having the chances of linen mixing up, no major control on washing uh, the chemicals that they use. And it's absolutely dependable on the vendor. The other mechanism is having a plant system in which, you know, laundry, laundry uh, hospitals can have their own laundry plants. Uh, one of the best ways where you have outsourced it to some extent, uh, while, you know, uh, more or less it's washed uh, within the hospital system. Uh, this would have, uh, you know, some initial cost while a manpower cost will, is going to be on the hospital, the maintenance and the uh, recurring costs. Uh, but, you know, you may have better control on this mechanism to make sure that, you know, loss and damage of linen is reduced uh, and it's taken care of. Uh, let me also share uh, the Apollo model, what we have at Apollo hospitals. So most of our hospitals, what we have is we own the linen. Uh, you know, we hire a contractor whose job is to collect the linen. 
and after laundering this this contractor delivers it to the hospital while we provide the space facility and the equipment uh, there is no manpower cost and the admin cost because it's the contractor that runs with his manpower within our system so we do have a better control on it uh, to prevent loss and damage uh, you know our infection control teams have stronger oversight on it uh plus you know uh, there there is there is that expertise that gets utilized from the in house hospital uh, systems however there could be a monopolies in the market where we could uh, you know have something like contract negotiations but at the end of the day whatever contract you are getting into or mechanism that you have would depend on the size of your hospital the number of beds and the quantity of dirty linen that's generated uh that speciality or the type of the hospital whether you are just an ambulatory care or you are a high end tertiary center where you do a lot of surgeries and uh, uh you know procedures uh the availability of linen and laundry services in your adjacent areas and and also even on the weather conditions because if you are in a uh, if you are in a country or an area where you know uh, there there is not enough sunlight or you know there's not much way of linen to get dried up uh it it becomes uh, very challenging there now some of the practices uh, dr achuba also touched about is you know uh, having the functional separation of your clean and the dirty sections definitely you know uh, it has to be a unidirectional flow wherein you know the dirty linen comes in through the dirty section goes to the washing cleaning so sorting washing cleaning process then goes to the clean section the linen is pulled out is ironed and then uh, stored but one very important thing that we miss out and we see in you know multiple times when we do audits is it's not only about having a physical separation it's also about movement not only movement of linen it's also about movement of people so people who are allocated to the dirty section should not be the ones who should be moving to the clean sections and vice versa so this is something which we really need to take care of uh, physical separation is one a good practice is to have a negative air pressure in the soiled areas while a positive pressure in your uh, cleaner areas some of the other points uh, you know to uh, consider or look at generally to have laundry on the ground floor so that you know it's uh, it's adjacent to the other services uh, that we need like water drainage ventilation uh, appropriate space requirement as we spoke about you know to have a separate clean and a dirty you would need enough space to separate this out and again this could be done based on the quantity uh, that you may be needing to wash and clean uh, so a separate place for storage of cleaning agents and uh, they also being separated what are used in the dirty section and what are used in the cleaning clean section Uh, because again clean section you would need these uh, cleaning agents to clean the surfaces of the machines or you know the floors and all uh flooring is very important to be rust proof non slippery easily washable because again there's going to be a lot of water chemicals that may flow in these areas similarly for the walls and the ceilings uh, doors and the windows uh you know doors wide enough to admit heavy machinery uh ventilation 10 air changes per hour is recommended a daylight to be used if possible however natural ventilation is good but you know at least in the storage section where you store clean linen uh, definitely natural uh, air or you know open windows are not advisable because they may also bring in dust uh, which may settle on your clean linen definitely a good availability and amount of the right quantities of you know the power water and steam uh and there are some benchmarks which are mentioned here which is about 45 kilowatt hour per 45 kg of laundry uh 3 kilowatts per hour uh hour per 45 kg of laundry uh, about 15 liters of hot water 10 liters of cold water per 0.5 kg of linen and steam line properly insulated uh you know when you're using steam for this process so these are some of the benchmarks which may we may utilize or use based on our requirement fire safety because this is a uh, you know area where a lot of lint may be produced as well so fire safety is another very critical area to look at and some of the adjacent uh, sections or areas in that like you know the storage section focusing on infection control chemical storage yeah. managers room uh, you know a lot of these other ancillary services which may be required in the similar space 
if we move on to uh, the process uh, very quickly, uh, if you look onto the right side of the slide, you know, uh, collection and segregating uh, the, the linen as per the uh, local uh, guidelines or the way we want to do it. Uh, obviously, use of proper personal protective equipment which the staff should be wearing. How does it get transferred to the laundry? Again, when you are collecting linen from different parts of the hospital, they are dirt. this is dirty linen and it should follow one single path and it should be unidirectional again. From the moment it gets inside the laundry, it gets sorted into infected, non-infected. Uh, weighing the laundry linen is a good practice and then washing them from where they move through the drying tumblers, uh, someone to inspect, rewash if, you know, or tailor or mend if, if they are not proper. Now here also one or two very important thing is uh, the, the platforms on which you would be ironing your linen. Please make sure that these platforms are, uh, you know, of stainless steel and not something of wood, because again, there may be, uh, you know, some particles from the wood which may uh, get deposited on the laundry that you are ironing or, uh, you know, wood can itself uh, harbor many organisms or germs uh, in its structure per se. And then when you are, when you're laundering, when you are ironing it, you know, the clean linen should not be touching the grounds and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, post that, how is it packed after being stored? How is it packed? How is it transported to the clean areas? Again, through a clean route, which is unidirectional and which does not crisscross with your uh, dirty uh, storage linen area or your route or the path that you have brought in this dirty linen into your uh, laundry. So, so this is something which is very important. So it's not only looking at the laundry, but the whole process of how it is collected and how it is uh, distributed. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, uh, examples or data that we look at generally staffing in this laundry, which is generally calculated based on uh, the, you know, the, the uh, number of pieces that you are laundering every day. Uh, obviously, you would need a laundry manager, uh, people who have to be stationed in multiple areas of the laundry based on the size of the laundry. Uh, so generally for our size, for about 500 bedded hospitals, we do have, uh, you know, uh, about uh, 17 to 51 people who, who are available in this uh, particular laundry. Uh, the minimum guarantee that we give to the contracted services is about 6,000 kgs uh, per day. And how we have looked at is one laundry staff per 100 to 120 kgs of laundry to manage uh, this particular uh, piece. Some of the schedules and work uh, daily in the laundry, you know, to clean the equipments, to have the work procedures, weekly to intend the washing agents and make sure your chemicals are available and have an oversight on infection control. A monthly look at the duct cleaning, linen stock check, you know, look at your damaged fabric, strain on infection control, monitor your KPIs or the key process indicators, and annually conduct drills and have your risk assessment and mitigations uh, in your hospitals. If we look at the equipments, again, these would depend largely on the type of the hospital, the size, the load, and the type of laundry system that you have in existence. But this may vary from boilers to washing machines, to uh, you know the drying tumblers, to the steam bed press, weighing scales, extinguishers, and definitely an eye wash station as well, because uh, you know there would be there could be chances of your staff getting harmed while. Uh, you know, laundering because uh, it involves a lot of chemicals. If we look at largely some statistics on linen, uh, how much of linen is required, we generally assume that, you know, on the bed occupancy of 100%, four to six sets of linen is required. So considering that one set is in use, one set which is ready to use, one set that is being processed in the laundry, one set which is in the transit, and about two sets for the weekends, holidays, or exigencies, uh, you know, in the stock. So we generally consider this as a principle, you know, in a hundred uh, percent occupancy based on your admissions, uh, the usage, uh, you know, ICU, there may be uh, more changes, operation theaters, there may be more changes, while in a ward, there could be a change once in a day. 
So, so depending on that, generally four to six sets of linen for the occupancy and the number of beds that you may have. Again, if something, you know, you don't measure, you know, it doesn't get managed and obviously it doesn't improve. So measuring is very important. Uh, what to measure? You may look at some of the infection control KPIs. You may look at process efficiency KPIs, you know, on how many linen uh, you have discarded every month. Uh, the weight of the linen that is washed with respect of amount of detergent or chemical that you are using, you know, monitoring of patient complaints on the linen or your staff complaints on the linen, because it's the staff who gives the linen or uses the linen uh, or, you know, make sure that the bedding is done. So, so it's their satisfaction also, because they should not have to go back and forth finding that the linen is not good and right. Uh, and, you know, you can define these KPIs with baselines and the targets that you want to achieve. Uh, have a, a monthly review of this data to know where you stand and what needs improvement. And also, you know, look at doing some unannounced audits and, you know, definitely an infection control uh, practitioner or a nurse's uh, visit at least once in a week, once in 15 days to oversee the whole process to make sure that everything is happening right. This is just an example of a laundry checklist that we have that we use, which we use for an unannounced uh, audits when we visit the laundry. Uh, and then, you know, when we uh, look at multiple things and when uh, we look at the whole process. Uh, some of the best practices I've already spoken few things about, uh, you know, having a negative pressure and a positive pressure division, uh, having your staff immunized, having a training calendar, uh, making sure that your laundry staff is trained, monitoring your KPIs, uh, you know, uh, making sure that you are evaluating and understanding what's happening on your KPIs. Some of the quick snapshots from our hospitals, if you look at the first picture that is from a, a standalone laundry and the contracted service runs this laundry which is inside the hospital campus. The second picture shows uh, the clear display of protocols. The third shows the machine usage instructions which are pasted on the machines itself so that the staff doesn't get confused. Uh, the fourth picture shows uh, an example of a barrier washer for infected linen which is again earmarked so that infected linen doesn't uh, mix with any other linen. Uh, the fifth picture is about trolleys that are earmarked for collecting soil linen, semi-washed linen and clean linen. Uh, the next is about safe storage of chemicals. Uh, the seventh picture is about, uh, you know, how have we done the markings on the floor so that, uh, you know, people are clear and this is a red section, this is a yellow and this is a green section. And some of the glass windows for natural lights and another example of that. Uh, in the end, uh, you know, I would just like to say that it's a very important area which is neglected most of the times, uh, but it is critical and important and an efficient and effective system can definitely provide patient uh, experience, a better patient experience, and most importantly, reduce the risk of cross-contamination, which we don't realize in a system most of the times. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for that patient hearing. I hope this was helpful. And thank you once again to the IFC team. Thanks a lot, Gora. Generally wonderful presentation because it has lots of practical tips. And basically every slide of it, I think our audience can use it as a checklist. Number one, to use it uh, to assess their own existing laundry services, or if they are thinking about designing one, then organize it properly. Everything is in there, all the recommendations regarding the layout, regarding the processes of management, uh, and also some useful useful tips and pieces of advice on how to do it better and how to do it more effectively. So everything matters, as you can say. Again, we stress the fact that uh, the, there is a lot of risk in uh, dirty linen, so we shouldn't underestimate its importance and it requires a lot of attention. That's number one. Also, you need uh, to have a unidirectional flow and it's a no compromise thing. Uh, from dirty to clean, always remember about it. 
segregation and use of different colors makes your life much easier. And everything matters even where you locate your laundry. But if you decide for some reason, and in some countries, this might also be an option. If you decide to outsource your laundry, also you can have uh, a look once again on the slide, which says about pros and cons of having external laundry and having laundry inside. But we'll definitely discuss it more uh, during our question and answer session. And before we move to the next speaker, I wanted to remind you once again that you have a chance to ask our experts questions using the question and answer button or in the chat, but better question and answer button. Already questions are arriving. I'm writing them down and looking forward to our interesting discussion after the third speaker. And the third speaker is Abdul Ahmed, IFC consultant for healthcare quality and patient safety. Abdul, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank, thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Achuba and uh, Gaurav. Really, uh, you covered most of my parts also. I will speak further uh, uh, about the part which uh, I have some uh, uh, view, view, views to say. And thanks for the participant. I think uh, more than 190 uh, participants across the world uh, joining this one. Really, uh, uh, thank you for uh, joining this uh, presentation. Yes, uh, Dr. Achuba touched the point, uh, mostly the labor, I mean, uh, the laundry safety and laundry uh, management, it's not been discussed in many uh, forums, many places. So this is one of the good uh, platform that you can hear about the safety in the uh, laundry. Uh, this is what uh, all the panelists discussed already. I'll start with this quote. I actually, I like this quote, uh, one of the uh, of all the surfaces in a hospital, a patient will have the greatest edge, a degree of con contact will be um, their gowns, bed linings, and laundries, and, and typically. They are, uh, the laundry is the one, laundry materials or the, the textiles are the one, mostly they will be in uh, touch and mostly they will be using in, throughout the stay in their hospitals, visiting the hospitals. So, uh, you know, laundry, when we talk about laundry, why the uh, laundry is different from uh, uh, hospital laundry and others is uh, really different. Uh, the reason is the laundry from hospital is the linen or the textiles coming from known infected patients. And uh, sometimes it's contaminated with body, body fluids. Occasionally it's mixed with sharps and exa example needles and ampules, et cetera. And the most vital part of this one is directly involved in patient safety. The patient safety is most uh, uh, defined in uh, laundry services also. Dr. Gaurav touched it's uh, three to 4%, I believe, uh, of the infection, hospital healthcare acquired infection. It's been uh, reported uh, uh, related to the uh, laundry. And also the patient satisfaction. Here is a critical part, uh, the patient satisfaction. The patients will not be know whether the laundry or the textiles in the hospital is contaminated or clean or uh, uh, it's safe to use. But it's our responsibility, healthcare providers' responsibility to, is to provide a safe uh, textiles or linen to the patients. So that's also directly involved in patient satisfaction. Patient satisfaction, mostly they'll be seeing adults or uh, uh, stains in the laundry, but there are many other things which is which they cannot see. We have to take our responsibility to provide satisfaction. The other one is, again, uh, very most important one is staff. The staff belongs to us also need to be saved or protected from the uh, uh, laundry practices, that's occupational uh, safeties. Uh, that is also directly involved in it. We will be uh, seeing what are the HSE and other uh, uh, safety practices that, that we have to consider. 
Uh, Dr. Achuba really uh, covered this uh, physically separate dirty area and clean area. It's unidirectional way it's uh, touched, and uh, that's what uh, um, uh, here also most of this uh, point in this mentioned what is mentioned here. It's uh, touched by covered by uh, Dr. Achuba and Gaurav. Maybe I'll skip this one. Here, uh, even uh, both are mentioned about it. Here, I have some different way of presenting it. Uh, what are the classification? What are the type of uh, laundries uh, collected in um, uh, hospitals? Uh, <clears throat> again, this is a primary uh, so, uh, patient safety starts from laundry collection side that I would, I believe and strongly recommend. When we collect the laundries or uh, so segregating the uh, laundries uh, separately, that will reduce most of the uh, end, end, uh, end products or end results of the safety. So in best practice, I have seen uh, in many places, uh, there were many other prior practices like the Prachiba using uh, yellow, red and yellow. Uh, the other places I have seen also uh, general laundry like curtain traps and table spreads use, usually they are collected in uh, gray color uh, laundry bags which is uh, considered maybe may not be uh, um, uh, contaminated uh, and staff uniform usually it's collected in uh, white color hamper or white color bags whatever it is and patient learning uh, the learning used in uh, diagnostic services or uh, opd department outpatient department and inpatients are collected in blue color uh, laundry bags or uh, linen and uh, the uh, linens used in operation theater labor room and procedure room these are collected in red color uh, hamper the laundry bags and this is the one I would like to highlight from uh, other uh, panelists uh, that what I have seen or what I uh, we have used uh, before. Uh, red color bag, it's a water soluble bag. Whenever we receive a uh, uh, linen from a hospital that is visibly soiled and also the linen from in uh, isolation ward or isolation area or known pa uh, patients of uh, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> contaminated uh, linens. It can be collected in uh, water soluble uh, uh, laundry bags. The laundry bag will directly go to our uh, laundry machines. It will not be opened, it will not be touched, it will not do anything. So it will go to the laundry uh, directly. And again, the other one is uh, black or yellow or many other colors used. Uh, it's to collect the heavily soiled uh, uh, laundry. It's not a linen, it's part of laundry. It's like mop head floor mats or something very frequently used. Uh, best practice, I think both are, both of you, uh, both of the panelists uh, uh, clearly explained what are the uh, structure or what are the uh, layout, functional layout required for the laundry. Even I have the same um, one, uh, maybe I will go through quickly. Uh, if you see, yes, it, I, I tried to uh, find something what Dr. Gaurav presented. I wasn't able to find some good one, so I made it on my own uh, for easy to explain to you. If you look at this one, it has three uh, components. One is uh, a red color uh, bracketed, one is green color uh, bracketed, one is not bracketed. The red color bracket, bracketed is the one uh, red uh, dirty area. And the green color one is clean area. Now we'll see what is uh, how to do. Uh, it, it, it is receiving the dirty and uh, it has an area for holding the dirties and laundry area. Usually what happens in big hospitals, uh, the laundries are loaded in the dirty side and the staff in the clean side or the other side, they will be taken out. It will not be moving. Uh, the staff will not move from uh, the red zones to the uh, other zone, uh, as Dr. Rajwa mentioned. So, if you have a staff, less staff or less number of staff that is employed in your laundry, uh, if you have something, uh, some uh, staffing uh, uh, things, uh, it's okay, that's uh, fine. You can ask the staff to complete the job which is uh, required in the red area and then go to the uh, uh, green zone or the clean zone with changing the entire uh, PPEs or entire uh, uniform or whatever they do so that's the best way you can handle uh unidirectional uh, flows 
And this is a dirty transportation cart washing. Whenever there's a dirty uh, uh, carts, it has to be cleaned frequently so that it will not take back the contamination again to the uh, hospitals. And this is a clean area and dryer, uh, whatever things available, it's uh, Dr. Gaurav mentioned uh, um, excellently. And here about the clean storages, uh, it has a clean storage, it has three components. One is a clean storage of uh, aseptic cloths, aseptic linens, like uh, the linen used in OT and uh, um, uh, procedure areas. The other one is uh, clean storage is like inpatient uh, bed linen and other things that can be stored in one. The reason why to have separation is to avoid the unnecessary movement of staff from uh, clean zone. Anyway, even if you want to deliver uh, the other side of uh, area, it's a gray uh, colored, it's a uh, movement corridor uh, where you will be supplying the linen. So any, even if you supply, uh, staff has to move uh, within the laundry so it, it's better to have a separated one if not just try to understand the concept and try to make your plan or your procedure accordingly uh, you know this is not the typical picture of a typical requirement of a, a laundry which we can see in all the hospitals but most of the standard which i know is recommending this kind of uh, pr uh, practices and the other one is clean uh, uniforms uh, and of course, there should be an office to manage all this uh, laundry process and the day-to-day -day management of the laundry. Uh, the safety requirement in the uh, dirty area, uh, it definitely it need a, a sufficient uh, PPEs and uh, uh, <coughs> fully equipped hand washing area, not a hand sanitizer may be not sufficient in that particular area. And you need to have an eye wash uh, and emergency sh shower. In some best practices, I have seen some hospitals using emergency shower because some of the linen or hamper or uh, the patient linen will have uh, body fluids, maybe it will spill on uh, the body. So you need to have an immediate shower to protect the staff from that one. And definitely you need to have a staff, uh, first aid boxes to give a immediate, uh, say example, if your uh, laundry is away from the hospital building, you need to have a first aid box before it goes to a uh, uh, hospital. And spill kits, you need to have a spill kits to clean if there's any unnecessary unwanted spills like body fluids or a huge amount of chemical uh, spill, you need to have a spill kits. <clears throat> Why we must focus in uh, risk in laundry and what are the risks involved in the laundry? Uh, th these are all the risks. Usually, uh, it's been reported. This is all the uh, area that's usually reported in the hospitals about the practices. We will look one by one. Uh, chemical agents, you will be using lots of uh, chemical agents that will be gi uh, giving uh, respiratory problems and uh, skin uh, allergic, uh, many things. Uh, hospital biological agents like infections and uh, 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 contact with the skin, your skin and uh, sensitization happens and equipment, explosion, crushing and physical injury it ha happen, happen. And, uh, <clears throat> the electricity burns, shocks and fire is sometimes even death and shops, it, it may contain some, uh, it may cause some uh, cuts, punctures and also cross infections. Maybe the shops from some, uh, uh, known infected patients, maybe it will uh, give you uh, infections of the same. And hospital fire that Dr. Gaurav explained uh, in detail and heat stress because it, the laundry will be having a more amount of uh, heat from the wa uh, washer, from the uh, uh, steamer, from ironing, uh, all this happens. So that also need to be cared of. And uh, sometimes noise, vibrations, and sometimes it will be confined space, workspace. So these all the incident can happen in laundry. So whenever we look at the laundry, we look at the laundry, we have to uh, take care of all these elements. It may appear, may occur. So we need to have a proactive approach to eliminate these all the uh, points. 
And uh, of course, definitely there should be a risk mitigation process. Uh, maybe this particular part, you need to have the laundry staff or laundry management or the management should have a uh, introduction with the uh, uh, risk management and uh, HSE management, infection controls to manage the risk and uh, by minimize the risk, risk that could uh, report in the uh, laundry department. And <clears throat> this is another uh, one. When we talk about uh, laundry safety or uh, patient safety or uh, linen for patient safety, when we think who should be responsible for laundry safety, here are the some uh, functions that based on the, some of the inf uh, investigation or uh, some incident happened and uh, I went for a detailed root cause analysis and found some of these uh, functions directly involved. And so I will explain, uh, maybe that will help you to uh, understand what are the uh, uh, responsible uh, department and what how they can uh, help you to achieve the safety of laundry. The leadership, and uh, I understand most of the hospitals or most of the clinics, uh, which which is uh, uh, primary care. Maybe not all these functions will be available in your hospital. You don't know to uh, no need to worry about the functions. What I what it mentioned here. Just take the concept and uh, think in that way. Uh, wear the shoes of that particular uh, functions and think maybe that will help you to uh, bring uh, safety in the laundry. So any uh, safety, any uh, quality, any uh, improvement, uh, leadership is the primary responsibility that has to be there and have to support uh, with the resources, have to support with the uh, safety culture and have to strongly uh, support uh, uh, in, uh, changes in the environment and technology. You know, the world is changing uh, every frequently. So uh, uh, the leadership has to support with the technology and uh, environment changes so that the uh, uh, changes can be brought into the uh, 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 department for effective management. Quality management, the quality staff uh, should uh, establish a clear policy procedures and uh, uh, guidelines and work instruction like what Dr. Gauro present like the checklist. Uh, these all the uh, quality management or it's not necessarily the quality management, may, may, many other places can come and quality will be the most responsible to handle all these fun functions. And uh, whenever we talk about uh, um, uh, policy and procedure, uh, the quality are the best people they can uh, br uh, bring uh, reliable references and best practices across the world, and also the frequent audit and effective action plans that will help uh, improving the safety. Uh, risk management, again, uh, when we talk about the safety in the laundry, uh, the most critical elements in the laundry is risk management, infection control, and uh, uh, health and safety environment. Risk also one of the one the, we saw what are the risks involved in it, and we need to have a team. It's not necessarily a risk manager or risk department or risk uh, people. They have to do it. People who managing or uh, laundry or involved in laundry process just think of this way: identifying the risk and developing and implementing uh, risk reduction strategies, and also monitor how the strategies are working and keep an eye on. Uh, uh, new, whenever the new risk or hidden risk arises, keep eye on that one. And human resources, definitely you need to have a good uh, competent staff to perform the laundry. The competent does not mean it has to be a degree or university degrees or anything. Uh, whatever the process, whatever the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, practices happens that need to be uh, part of the culture, part of the day-to-day -day activities. Uh, so. Uh, people who can handle will be competent, uh, called as a competent uh, staff. The uh, human resources have to ensure the uh, staff working here are competent enough to handle the laundry and ensure a mix, uh, skill mix within the laundry, and also ensure uh, staff available, uh, aware of their roles and responsibilities. And training, we talked a lot about training. Uh, Dr. Kaurav also explained, we are, all the staff working in the laundry need to be uh, trained 
it's no matter whether it's risk or infection control or HSE or uh, incident, whatever it is, that has to be cross-trained. Uh, the uh, laundry staff also has to be including in all, all trainings. And also uh, the best uh, practices I've seen is uh, at least they do uh, one need analysis, training need analysis annually. And laundry hierarchy, uh, ensure the roles and responsibility are cl clearly defined and factual decisions like Dr. Gaurav mentioned the uh, KPIs. Whenever you take uh, decisions, you need to have a factual evidence as why we be taking this decision, what for we taking the uh, decisions and ensure the staff aware of their roles, roles and responsibilities. And when we talk about the uh, equipment safety, uh, we will have manufacturer and supplier and contractor. Manufacturers mostly, they will not come and install the equipment. Maybe a supplier will be appointed and supplier will have a contractor. So just to have a, a quick, I mean, uh, keep considering that also part of the safety requirement for laundry, ensure the machinery is part supplier, uh, supplier is available to deliver the required supplies all, all around. Ensure the supplier is capable uh, to PPM and corrective maintenance. <clears throat> ensure the suppliers uh, are uh, uh, acting or working as per the uh, manufacturer's specification. So it's vice versa from the manufacturers. The manufacturer need to have an operation manual and uh, troubleshoot manuals that has to be available, uh, available with the supplier or contractor, even uh, the uh, engineering department or the land staff need to have all these uh, documents available with them. And so, and also, uh, PPM, corrective active, uh, preventive plan, planned preventive maintenance has to be done uh, as recommended by the manufacturer. And if it is contractor, the contractor um, has to perform the work as per the manufacturer and also a supplier, supplier requirements. And as I said, the infection control is one of the vital role, play vital role in uh, implement uh, or uh, uh, outcome of uh, laundry safety. They have to develop and monitor uh, policy procedure. And also uh, they have to uh, monitor uh, infection prevention uh, strategies. Uh, uh, maybe the if you have a laundry uh, infection control committee, um, uh, mo most of the hospitals, they don't include the laundry in the infection control committee. Uh, consider them to be in your committee. Uh, <clears throat> And frequently, most frequently, uh, do an infection specific audit for the uh, laundry uh, for safe, uh, safe laundry safety. And housekeeping department, again, they have lots of uh, responsibilities too. And they are the ones segregating the uh, policy, uh, I mean, the uh, linen type of linens, appropriate use of uh, color coded hampers, and separate them uh, whether it's soiled or not soiled and timely transport of dirty and keep the laundry department always clean. And uh, the uh, housekeeping and laundry staff has to be tra trained with the infection control policy and procedures all the time. Here, the nursing staff, usually the nursing uh, means the clinical staff, they are the one uh, act as a bridge between the uh, non-clinical staff to clinical staff because most of the process uh, happens in front of the nursing staff. So you can have uh, the nursing staff to be uh, aware, monitor the entire situation of what is happening for the Lenin and uh, uh, laundry uh, processes. HSC de uh, department, health and safety environment department develop a policy procedures and uh, training and do the drills, conduct the drills and ensure availability of the material safety data sheets. You know, the laundry will be having lots of uh, uh, chemicals and acids or uh, things, uh, you need to have a uh, material safety data sheets to uh, do immediate first aid and do conduct uh, uh, frequent audits. And disaster management, the laundry, uh, usually they have lots of uh, possible disaster prone area, uh, say example, uh, fire uh, and chemical and biological uh, uh, spills. If you have disaster management, if you have practices of the disaster, just ensure the uh, laundry also included and have 
uh, uh, more frequent drills on um, the processes. And incident management, as I said, the leadership need to ensure the safe cult safety culture, safe culture, and uh, incident management have to uh, uh, ensure the reporting culture is effective and keep track of all the incidents and uh, accident happens in the laundry and have a trend analysis to report uh, either it could be KPI or it could be a redeveloping your training needs. And facility engineering, uh, in, ensure the machines are fixed as per the manufacturer guidelines, ensure the laundry structures based on the national uh, uh, regulatory authorities. I think one of the participants is asking the question uh, uh, regarding uh, that one. So uh, most of the country, they have a, a clear uh, uh, guidelines on uh, how, uh, what are the requirement for the laundry or even for hospitals. So if the requirement or regulatory guidelines is not available for your country, you can very much uh, refer uh, IFC guidelines or WHO or CDC guidelines. And also ensure the preventive maintenance are completed on time uh, and make sure uh, the negative pressure and positive pressure in the uh, system. Uh, and also it's been monitored and controlled, it's working effectively. And supply chain management, again, uh, they are the one uh, sourcing the linen and uh, uh, purchasing the uh, uh, laundry uh, equipments and uh, reagents or uh, the chemicals. Uh, make sure they, they all are uh, approved by the local uh, agencies, lo local regulatory authorities. And also make sure in, uh, uh, the stocks available on uh, to manage the day-to-day -day activity, uh, activities. Dr. Gaura mentioned about the uh, minimum requirement or the uh, requirement four to six per hospital for 500 bedded hospital. But it's uh, again, uh, as he said, uh, the number depends on the uh, patient flow and uh, the occupancy rate and many things are involved in it. Just make sure uh, the, those all uh, been addressed in your laundry safety and store. Definitely that's one of the area that we have to look into a store because the low uh, store usually to have positive pressure. Uh, if it is not positive pressure, make sure there's a, a, a good ventilation available so that there, uh, there is no dust or anything comes inside and uh, the store is uh, uh, <clears throat> maintained in a clean, uh, clean environment and practice first in first out system. Whenever you uh, store the clean linen in your uh, store, make sure the new one comes, uh, uh, goes at the behind the, or the bottom of the countings so that the top one, the uh, one already available will be used first so that the bottom one will, will uh, not be remaining for a long time and ensure the sufficient stocks are available. <clears throat> And nowadays, uh, we uh, the, the after this uh, um, uh, the pandemic, uh, there were lots of concern about the home laundry or the, the uniform washed in the uh, home. Uh, at maximum, avoid laundering in uh, hospital uniform in home. If there is no way that you have to handle it, uh, it's okay. Uh, just follow some. Uh, 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 tips to uh, overcome the uh, cross contaminations or even, even uh, taking the infections to your home, uh, your family. Uh, when you load the uh, uh, washer, use only the linen used for hospital. Do not mix with the uh, routine, uh, your cloths with the uh, hospital cloths. Treat visibly soiled uniform prayer uh, to laundering. Uh, uh, Dr. Ochaba uh, mentioned about uh, slicing or uh, soaking in a uh, hypochlorite, you can use that one and dry them immediately after washing. Do not do multitasking. Most of your uh, laundry or the washing machine will be available in a kitchen. I've seen in many homes, many places, uh, it's available in a kitchen. So when it's in kitchen, please do not do uh, multitasking. When you washing, complete the wash washing and then do the kitchen work and ensure um, PPE or hand hygiene, uh, 
before and after using the uh, laundries and keep children or any family members in your home uh, uh, away from hospital uniforms. And it's one of the best practice or most uh, people, uh, they thinking outsourcing laundry service is the best solution. It could be, it depends on your uh, uh, budgeting and other uh, aspects. But if you are outsourcing uh, um, laundry, please ensure that laundry is specialized to handling healthcare uh, laundries. I have seen some uh, hospitals, they've been uh, contracted with the laundry or, or usually they are domestic laundries. So make sure they are not uh, domestic and they are specialized in handling the healthcare laundries. Ensure uh, the staff are competent to handle your uh, uh, hospital laundries. The laundry of outsourced company, uh, they have the competency to handle your uh, linens and all like uh, color codings and other aspects. Ensure the laundry meets national and business establishment requirement of your country, wherever the country you belong. Make sure that uh, meets the requirements. And also mutually agree, uh, agree with your outsourcing laundry. Either they're going to use hospital policy or their policies. You know, the hospitals are, because the hospital will be the most responsible if there is any issues. So the hospital has to decide which one, uh, which policy has to be uh, followed. So mutually uh, agree between the uh, outsourcing laundry and the hospitals, which policy they're going to use. And uh, the most importantly, do not overfill laundry hampers. And also Dr. Gaurav uh, mentioned about it, do not count uh, the dirty laundry. You don't need to, when you send to uh, laundry, you don't need to count. Maybe uh, the, he mentioned uh, uh, weighing is a good practice. That's one of the good practice. Uh, may, uh, if you want to make sure the amount goes and amount uh, counts in is proportional, you may weigh uh, uh, the uh, laundries before it goes. Better not to do uh, counting. Ensure that the uh, dirty and uh, clean uh, laundries are transported in separate cart. The cart that is used to collect the uh, dirty should not bring the clean back. So uh, it's one of the tip to avoid the cross contaminations. Ensure the dirty linen and uh, clean uh, laundry is uh, not transported together. Same way how we receive even the transporting, it should not happen uh, the clean and dirty together. And the hospital, as I said, the hospital is most responsible for the patient safety and the patient satisfaction. So you have full freedom to conduct as many uh, as uh, second party audit. This is also one of the uh, question from the uh, participant asked, conduct as much as uh, second party audit or uh, your uh, checklist, use your uh, policy procedure to audit them as more as uh, frequently to avoid or make sure that uh, laundry practices are happening uh, safely. So here is a few tips to how to achieve uh, excellence in laundry. As Dr. Kaurav uh, mentioned, I would uh, strongly support to have a laundry uh, uh, KPIs and also create a pl platform for the, all the stakeholders, which I uh, mentioned. If it is not many uh, uh, stakeholders, it, um, most of them are handling uh, one or two, just think that way how it can be improved uh, the laundry, laundry practices. And also frequently have a meeting uh, uh, I would say it uh, maybe the infection control committee or some other committee could be a uh, good platform to meet and uh, focus on patient safety and uh, patient satisfactions and present all day-to-day -day issues and develop creative solutions on the laundry practices. Thanks for uh, <clears throat> your thanks for your participations. Hope uh, I have covered uh, many of the. Uh, thing which uh, the other panelists uh, missed. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer on that one. Abdul, thank you so much for providing such useful advice and uh, also lots of tips that I'm sure our audience uh, is inspired with and will be um, uh, eager to implement, hopefully, in their laundry services, uh, in their laundry unit, or maybe we'll use your advice to find uh, an external provider depending on the country.
So uh, we are done with uh, the presentations of our speakers, but before we move uh, to the uh, question and answer and our usually very hot discussion, I wanted to remind you uh, one administrative thing that we have uh, on Facebook, our community of practice, where hospitals can exchange their experience and also post uh, their achievements and lessons learned. Also, we do advertisements there or for what we uh, deliver, uh, like our training modules, etc. So it's interesting community where we can exchange knowledge. And you're welcome to join if you haven't yet done it. Uh, motivation is that we are having a laundry contest going on. Uh, so basically, we are looking for the improvements that you did in your laundry services or in your laundry unit. Uh, we already have some participants, but uh, you still have time because we extended uh, the time of our contest for one week. And maybe you are inspired by something, some examples today, and you will be able to share this within one week, then uh, you might get our prize. Uh, so the conditions are very simple. Uh, the, the one who gets the, be uh, the, the, mo the biggest number of likes is the winner. So you're welcome to ask your friends and the relatives and whoever you want to support you and to add likes for you. And then uh, it can be a photo of before and after. What it can be just description in writing what uh, was before and what did you do to improve the practices. So the best story will will get the prize. Uh, also, uh, important point: we are getting lots of questions today. Uh, lots of them are very practical regarding specific detergents or temperature of washing linen and lots of other things. So we will definitely be posting some of the questions in our community of practice. So something that is not answered today, and maybe you asked something and didn't get an answer, then it's definitely a reason to join our community of practice. So now let's move uh, to our uh, discussion with one very interesting, very important question. Uh, so what is the best practice of collecting linen from the isolation room? So do we start with disinfection or we just depend on PPE or personal protective means and just collect that linen and then disinfect it in the, uh, already in the laundry area? So which is the best practice and uh, what advice can we give to our audience? Uh, Abdul, Dr. Achuba, who would like to answer this question to be the first? Abdul, do you want to start? Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the best practices, what I have seen, uh, the uh, 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 isolation room or infection area, highly infectious area, will have a separate hamper, which is, uh, uh, you know, patient by patient, it's not the whole day uh, collection, patient by, by patient. The, the laundry hamper will be uh, uh, manufactured by the uh, water soluble. So uh, the staff who collects no, uh, the housekeeping or uh, the staff will not go inside. So the patients will be advised to remove or the nursing staff will be uh, helping the patients to remove the uh, linen and they, they will put it into the water soluble bags and the water soluble bag will go separately uh, to the laundry and it will not be opened, it will not be touched, it will directly go to the uh, uh, washing machine. And uh, from the uh, washing machine, I have seen uh, different practices used in different facilities, like uh, pre-soaking happens with the detergent and uh, hypochlorites, and uh, also the uh, you know the uh, washing cycle. Maybe uh, they do uh, twice or two cycles or three cycles. It depends on the hospital, uh, the type of linen and the type of detergent what they use, and also the water quality available with them. Like if it is a hard water, maybe you need to go for extra cycle. Uh, if it is a good water, maybe uh, you can consider uh, reducing one cycle. This is the best practice that I have seen. And, uh, and after washing, it goes as a normal uh, washing, normal laundry, and it goes for the normal processes. Thanks a lot, Abdul. Very useful to know. Dr. Achuba, anything from you on this? Well, he has actually captured it, yes. It's best to actually just take it from there and take it to a separate place. Make sure you know that you are segregating properly. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Abdul. 
Thank thanks, you. thanks a lot, Dr. Chuba. Uh, actually, speaking about stuff, so Abdul, you mentioned stuff several times. Uh, which recommendation you can give to our audience regarding the stuff? Who should be the staff working in the laundry? Should it be housekeepers? Because that's what the practice we see in multiple hospitals. Should it be like nurse assistants? Who should be collecting uh, the linen? And who should be working in the laundry? What qualifications should we look for once we think about designing this? service. Thanks okay. a lot. Thank you. Thanks for the question. That's a fantastic question. I, I have seen that question uh, on many occasions this question been asked to me. Uh, that is why I use the word competency, not the qualification. The educational qualification, maybe that particular department or particular job, maybe you will not find the uh, uh, qualified. Maybe the manager or uh, the higher level uh, yes, you can uh, think of it. Some uh, most of the hospital, uh, the cl clinics, and the uh, primary healthcare center, they use few staff, like uh, four to five staff, and uh, maybe they are not. They don't have the manager within them. Uh, they have so whatever it is, whatever in this case, uh, my advice or my uh, the way I, how I used uh, before is anybody comes to uh, not only uh, laundry and uh, other support services, including the CSSD, anybody comes to, or anybody goes to their department, they have to go through a series of, series of training. Start from the infection control. First, they need to understand what does, what is the meaning of infection? That is a basic uh, thing they need to know. Now, maybe they will, infection means they've, uh, I mean, there's lots of prospects from the infection control or the micro, microbial uh, facts, they should know what is it and what all the health uh, concerns it could cause that need to be trained and followed by the other departments like uh, health and safety uh, or you know the uh, uh, process. Definitely you will be having a, a laundry or a infection control policy procedures that the staff need to follow that one. Say example, if you have five staff working in the laundry, if all the five staff using the same process, same uh, procedure, so that means I would say they are more competent enough. Thanks, thanks Abdul. So not qualification, but competences. This is something to remember definitely. So Dr. Achuba, maybe you have something to add to this question and also additional question to you. How do you solve the problem of staff turnover? After you train them, after you increase their competences, how do you make sure that they stay <laughs> with you? Because this question came to us several times from different hospitals. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Julia, for the question. It's quite, uh, it's quite something, you know. Um, you try and train staff to a level of proficiency so that they can carry out tasks for you the way you want them to be done. And that determines the outcomes. You want fairly consistent outcomes. And then if you have staff staying for at least a period of time to understand, understudy you and have an understanding of what you want, it makes it easier. Now, as it is, like I highlighted in my presentation, in this part of the world, there's a huge exodus of medical staff being attracted to Canada, United Kingdom, Australia. So what we do really is we, we see how to, it might not sound like a very nice thing. One, be competitive when it comes to remuneration and payment of salaries and all that. So that even if you have people leaving your own establishments, the other establishments around will be looking for how to work for you. That's the truth of the matter. After all, everybody's working to see how they can. But that's still primary. That's not really medical. It's just since I'm a medical director, I'll give you a holistic response to the question. Then the second thing is, well, you need to strengthen the system. You need to strengthen the system such that you have a SOPs, you have start, uh, operating protocols, and then you have your checklists, you keep training and training, you make sure that you strengthen the system so that even in the absence of those people that have been there since, if you have new people coming in, you focus on the onboarding. When the onboarding uh, program is strong, they mean that as the person gets into the place, he sees what everybody is doing. Like our chief quality assurance officer will always tell you, monkey see, monkey do. So when you have made the system strong, you have strengthen the system as people are leaving from the onboarding from wherever they are going people are ready to give them instructions and directions on the correct thing to do 
So you need to strengthen the system. And that's where even if people keep going, as new ones are coming in, they're easily trained. Thanks, Dr. Chuba. That's so true. Such a great point you made. Maybe, maybe I can add. Yes, please, Abdul. Yes, go ahead, please. Maybe I can add a uh, point. Uh, like uh, Dr. Gaura mentioned uh, about his facility, the staffs were outsourced. The laundry belongs to them. The staff were outsourced. I've seen many hospitals, they're doing that one. So again, for them also, there's a tips, uh, advices. Whenever uh, they change the uh, staff, make sure the staff go through the training process. After the training, they uh, uh, go to the department to do their uh, work. Maybe the laundry staff uh, available, like uh, you mentioned about the hierarchy, probably there some uh, people can uh, do the training, but it's our responsibility, hospital responsibility, to make sure they went through the uh, right training. It happened to me once uh, when I went to the laundry and I have seen the laundry staff brand new from some other new contractor yeah how they came and uh, what they're doing and uh, it was a really shocking one for uh, uh, it happened so uh, you know again we have to stop the process and to uh, train them uh, you know rapid training to make them they are aware of our hospital policies and working on the uh, patient safety i mean the right safety procedures Thanks a lot, Abdul. That's yeah, that's so so true. Uh, training is key. <laughs> what else can we say about it? The importance of training cannot be underestimated. Yeah. So we get yeah. lots of questions regarding very uh, specific things which relate to the practice of uh, cleaning uh, the using specific chemicals, detergents, specific temperature, uh, quality of the fabric, how many times uh, it can be washed before it's removed. Uh, and also specific types of curtains made of uh, some material which is uh, resistant to microbes. So uh, number question number one basically is, uh, is there any resource where hospitals can Google it? Or uh, part of this question number two, maybe you can give some advice how generally approach this question, yeah? How to choose chemicals because countries are different and regulations are different, of course, and the availability of chemicals is different. And how to choose fabric for a hospital. And uh, also important when the uniform, staff uniform and uh, patient bed linen uh, becomes already uh, uh, old and should be removed. Uh, is there any criteria or any number of cycles of washing recommended? Thanks. Who would like Can to I start? That? Abdul, yes, please. Yes. Uh, so, fantastic question. That is why I mentioned that in my, uh, the matrix uh, about uh, the national uh, uh, re regulatory requirements. Uh, most of the hospital have seen hypochlorite is the uh, agents that used uh, in my bad experiences, uh, some use acid, some alkalis, which uh, strong alkalis, which I don't recommend. The, how, even though they uh, say I do dilute and I do uh, uh, treat before that one, I do not recommend that one. Even uh, uh, washing with the uh, hypochlorite, probably most sufficient enough. Uh, uh, second thing about the uh, uh, linen. It is the manufacturer's uh, recommendation. You have to ask the manufacturer how many wash cycle this particular uh, uh, fabric can go. Uh, uh, when you do the purchasing and you have to make uh, sure, uh, clear with them, what are the uh, detergent and what is the concentration of hypochlorite that need to be used for this uh, 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 linen to be uh, carried over. Uh, and also, um, most of the manufacturers, they uh, 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 during the contract period or selling period, they explain this particular uh, fabric, how many cycles of how many uh, washes it can withstand. So um, while uh, addressing my uh, matrix, I mentioned about the incident. That was the one classic example uh, happened to uh, one of my facility. I actually went for... Uh, 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 maybe I'll make it quick. Uh, it's, it's a too big example. Uh, it's a, a quick uh, HSE round, HSE audit. When I went, I saw uh, the fabric um, yawn flying on the room and also the AC vent have this uh, yawn. Uh, you know, the yawn, the cotton material uh, comes from the fabric. That was my triggering point. And uh, when I started investigating that one, 
that was the real tip of iceberg that what I have seen in the laundry. Uh, it's may, many play, many uh, violations or many negligence, like including the type of uh, softener they use, the type of the, I mean, the concentration of hypochlorite they use. And, you know, if you make the wrong uh, concentration, that will spoil your uh, fabric. And if, if the manufacturers say it will come for uh, 50 cycles of washing, maybe uh, if you use the wrong concentration, it will uh, go in, uh, the, the material will come rough in 50, 25 cycles. So the lifetime will be reduced. Uh, so always better to uh, ask the manufacturer about the detergent and the uh, type of softener and the uh, hypochlorite that can be used. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Abdul. Dr. Achuba, uh, where do you look for uh, for such recommendations? Uh, of course, it will be specific for your country, but uh, just, just to give an example, where do you take uh, the recommendations about the best detergents, about uh, how to uh, uh, how many cycles uh, are recommended for your linen? Dr. Chuba, you are on mute. I think maybe Dr. Chuba has, has some technical issues, but uh, meanwhile, we can take one, one or two more questions because basically we are running off time, but questions keep coming. So let me remind you once again of those questions which we cannot answer today, uh, we will post in the community of practice. So please join. And uh, the next question is actually what hospitals ask us many times uh, is, can you dry linen in the sun outside? Is it recommended or not? Uh, and uh, Dr. Achuba, I think is bad, but let's take this question before we move to the next. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So is, is it safe to dry linen in the sun? Or uh, drying machine is the only solution? Or where, where should we dry it, if not in the sun? Okay. Thank you very much for that question. Actually, drying in the sun, that comes with a whole lot of, um, uh, let's say, restrictions and uh, what you would need, necessitation, so to speak, because the best actually is to just dry in the dryer and then move to, um, what's the name now, ironing. Now, if you decide that you need to um, dry in the sun, so to speak, wow, it would be better that you put it in a, in a covered place, a sheltered place, you understand what I mean? That maybe the sun, even if it needs to go through the roof to get to the linen, it has to go through. Also, that place should be far away from where you collect, um, what's the name, where you collect the soil linen and all that, so that the risk of contamination is low or nearly zero. You understand? Because the risk of hanging out the um, linen out there there's now the risk of splashes and then even microorganisms in the air and all that getting access to the linen before you now do the final processing. So actually the best is to use the dryer. Even at the end of the day, when you're finished ironing, you should actually store your linen in a closed cupboard. A closed cupboard and then if possible, you have a kind of a heater or something to just make sure that the linen stays dry, you know, that kind of thing. But hanging the clothes out, it's quite a hazard. You need to make sure that that area is far away from any possible contaminant to make sure that the possible possibility of splashing onto that linen is very low. And then there should be, it should be like, it should have its own building, so to speak, covered, sheltered, protected from possibility of contamination. If not, the best actually is to use the dryer. Thanks. Thank Thanks. That's wonderful. Wonderful answer. Thanks a lot, Dr. Achuba. Uh, so let's take one more question and then uh, unfortunately we will have to wrap up. Uh, if the hospital chooses to outsource uh, the, uh, the linen practice, the, the linen management, which is the safe way to transport contaminated linen to that place that is going to wash it? Can I answer? Yes, please. Yes. 
Um, the best practices I have seen, uh, the laundry hampers will be put into a, a temporary uh, transporting containers. The containers will be having a separate room that will be stored in a, a dirty laundry area uh, that has to be um, collected. Same like how we collect the waste, medical waste and the, the domestic waste. Uh, there should be a bin and uh, there should be a hamper. The hampers will be placed inside the uh, bin and it will be stored in a separate location. So whenever the outsourcing uh, laundry comes, they will be one trip, they will be collecting only the dirty collections. Even, even after the collections, they have to do the sanitization or cleaning or whatever uh, to the truck or uh, the transport uh, medium, what they're using. Uh, so that, that's the best practices I have seen. When it comes to a, a clean supply, there will be a separate clean supply uh, truck or uh, transport medium that will come to a hospital or clinic or healthcare facility that will go in the different entrance than the where the dirty uh, linens goes. So okay. there will be a two separate uh, entrance for one for the uh, dirty to go out, one for the clean to come in. So if you have a constraints with the uh, facility or uh, you know the facility doesn't uh, comfort this one, when the dry, uh, dirty goes out, immediately clean the area. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Abdul. And one one little question at the end, because I said we are going to wrap up, but questions keep coming, keep coming. So neonatal ICU and pediatric wards, any special considerations uh, that that uh, you can describe? Uh, something to, to, to consider, something to keep in mind? Neonatal ICU and pediatric cleaning. Dr. Achuba, Abdul, do you want to, to take this question? Okay, uh, maybe I can answer. Uh, yes, please. Uh, some best practices I have seen, uh, the laundry, uh, it's been autoclaved before, uh, especially uh, even for operation theater, some of the surgeon, uh, they uh, recommend uh, the uh, linen or the gown, whatever they're using uh, it to be, if it's not disposable, if it is reusable, if it's a uh, textile, uh, they recommend uh, to uh, autoclave before it goes to not only that uh, uh, even HDU or any uh, you know uh, um, uh, most critical area. Uh, some uh, hospitals they do uh, autoclaving the laundries. Okay, thanks. So, Dr. Chuba, anything from you? What's the practice in your hospital if it's applicable? Uh, uh, well. There isn't really that much of a segregation like that from uh, the NICU and the neonatal units. Uh, this guy's the same, the same uh, laundry complex we use, the same washing machine, uh, the same trolleys and all that, yes. Of course, they have their own trolley for dirty linen and so on, but it's still the same uh, laundry complex that will take everything to, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Dr. Achuba. Thanks a lot, Abdul, for being our wonderful speakers today. And thanks a lot for Gaurav who had to leave a little bit earlier today as well for these uh, interesting discussions on this tricky topic, because I hope now everyone understands it, its importance. It's a little bit behind the scene laundry usually so thanks a lot to our yeah, audience yeah. for being so active asking wonderful questions i hope you are inspired by the examples we described today i hope you had enough information on the requirements and you are ready to start your improvement process in the laundry today and now i move the floor to natalia thanks a lot and have a great evening afternoon everyone uh, thanks, Julia. Actually, this is the mo the webinar with most uh, questions on the point. I mean, specific questions that I love to uh, see. So our request is please provide your feedback. When you exit the webinar, you'll be prompted to respond to a uh, very few questions, three or four, and please let us know if you uh, want to share any feedback, like if it was especially useful, or let us know the tip that you use you will use as of tomorrow or as of next week. Just send us a quick message via email, and we'll be very, very grateful for that. Thank you, and have a good day.